welcome you to a U.S. soccer doubleheader here on Fox Sports. And we begin with the world's number one ranked U.S. women's team in Norway for a matchup of past World Cup winners. Then at 7.30 Eastern, we shift our coverage to Mexico City for a World Cup qualifying edition of one of the best rivalries in the game, the U.S. and Mexico. Two teams, two matches, playing for one country, for one crest. First, the defending World Cup champion U.S. women travel east to Norway. Even in a friendly match, the U.S. wants to prove they are always formidable. Carly Lloyd lets it fly to go! And show the world they have new stars ready to rise to any challenge. The shot! What a goal! Then, over 5,000 miles away, the U.S. men travel south into hostile soccer territory to take on the current kings of CONCACAF, Mexico. You do not know the meaning of hostile territory until you walk out onto that field. Michael Bradley leads a fast, strong, and confident American team that wants to take control of their World Cup destiny. Two matches, both fought for the glory of one crest. The summer of soccer continues on Fox and FS1. The pregame show live from Azteca Stadium in Mexico City is brought to you by AT&T. The sun is out on a glorious day, and we're about six and a half hours away from kicking off our coverage over on FS1 of the U.S. and Mexico 67th all-time meeting between these two nations. Glad you're here with us today. Rob Stone on the end, Alexi Lawless, Fernando Fiore. Joining us today, our special guest, injured U.S. national team player Jermaine Jones. The U.S. has only won one time at Azteca. You, my friend, were in the starting 11. What's it like to be back here? Um, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. You know, first of all, be here with you guys and, and yeah, you. and do that game and um, yeah, to be here, watch a good game and, and, and commentate. Lexi, you've also been part of this rivalry. You've also played in this rivalry here at Azteca. What separates it from some of the other great rivalries in the world? Well, Rob Stone, in my estimation, uh, this is not just the biggest, but it is the best rivalry in soccer in the world. And uh, part of it is because of the relationship that the two countries have. We are intertwined with Mexico, whether it's the proxim proximity, obviously, or the language or the culture or politics. And oftentimes that manifests itself in this, uh, in this game on the field. This is a bucket list for a lot of people. They are coming to Azteca to experience a USA-Mexico game because they have seen things, they have heard things. We are lucky enough to be here in this Thunderdome type of environment. We're lucky enough to be here on the side of the field. You guys are lucky enough to be able to watch it today, and you have to watch it. It is something to behold. Thunderdome. So we are mad Alexi. Yes, and always. And mad Fernando. Well, this is a amazing not only from the point of view of the players but the people who's coming here to the stadium. There are 22 million people in the city, in Mexico, and Probably more than 85,000 are approaching right now the stadium. Yes, right now it's empty. Yes, it's a sunny day, but this is the eye of the storm. This is the Stadio Azteca that will be filled with 87,000 plus people here screaming like crazy. And this is going to be a one hell of a game. So be ready because not only inside the game, inside the stadium, but outside will be a lot of people eating, drinking, having a good time. So tacos, carnitas, burritos, chimichangas are ready for you outside. Somebody's ready for lunch. His name is Fernando Fiore. <laughs> These two nations opened up the final round of World Cup qualification against one another. It was in November in Columbus, Ohio, and the Dos Acero hex for L3 was broken. They won it 2-1, a late goal from Rafa Marquez. How does that result impact the U.S. today? I think that impacts them a lot, especially to go come here to Mexico and um, never win a qualifying game, lost the qualifying game at home. And um, yeah, I think the, the guys come out here and try to get get something out. It's uh, it's it's not easy, but um, that's the games where you wait for. And um, today is the, the the day to shine. And the U.S. has never won a World Cup qualifier here. The best they've done a pair of zero zero draws. Plenty more at halftime and post game. But for now, let's kick off our U.S. Soccer Day. U.S. Norway women's activity. J.P. Della Camera and Ali Wagner. Thanks, Rob Alley. This is a very experienced Norway side that the USA is facing today. Yeah, I mean, they're experienced, but they look new to me. I mean, this team looks different under their new coach, Martin Sjogren. Usually they're coming out in a 4-5-1. Not today. They're going to come out in a 4-3-2-1. And when you typically see this team attack down the flanks, this is more of a central attack. 
starts with Marin Melda in the back line. She used to be a center mid for this team. Now she launches the attack as a center back. In the midfield, Hovey, number 20. Someone Americans are going to be familiar with as she plays with the Boston Breakers in the NWSL. And then up top, number 14, Otta Hegerberg, arguably the best top number nine in the world right now. And she's only on the eve of turning 22. And for the USA, they'll make some changes from Thursday's win over Sweden. And it wasn't the best performance by the U.S. I think that's a fair statement, but they do roll out in the same 4-4-2. Changes you're going to see is Casey Short pops out to that left back position. Abby Del Kemper steps in in the center back. Crystal Dunn comes to the right flank, and that opens up an opportunity for Rose Lavelle to play in that number 10 spot as Carly Lloyd sits on the bench to start this one out. And I think this team is going to look more dynamic in that front six, and a lot of they have to be more fluid in their attack. Well, much like Christian Pulisic has become the offensive driving force of the USA men's national team, 22-year-old Rose Lavelle has become an offensive catalyst for the women. Goals in each of her last two games. More on USA versus Norway when we return. And now during the Kia Summers on Us sales event, you won't have to make any payments for five months. I like the sound of that. Yeah, I just think everyone should get more out of their summer. More summer, huh? Woo! And you get 0% APR for up to 66 months! Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! So you like the car? Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. Okay, great. Yeah. Imagine what you can do with five months of freedom for payments. Hurry into your local Kia dealer today. At Ramada, say hello to a whole new way to feel welcome and to global destinations where everyone goes the extra mile. Say hello to Red. Stay two nights and save 20%, plus earn 1,000 bonus points. Book now at ramada.com. We're proud to reveal that Jim Beam Black has been awarded the world's highest rated bourbon. Their words, not ours. Make history. Oh, hello. Lucky for me, there's some great golf here in the Carolinas. Whether you golf or not, Geico could help you score some great savings on car insurance. Maybe even hundreds of dollars. Whoa! Oh, hole in one. And that's a par five, mind you. See how much you could save on car insurance. Go to geico.com today. Do you always put cheese and grooves in your sandwich? Of course, they're chips. Chips plus sandwich equals the perfect lunch. Oh, don't forget the pickle. It's kind of a big dill. Cheese it grooves. Chips made with 100% real cheese. Dang right, it's a chip. We're proud to reveal that Jim Beam Black has been awarded the world's highest rated bourbon. Their words, not ours. Make history. to the new frozen Dunkin' Coffee. Real Dunkin' Coffee, blended frozen, creamy smooth. A whole new way to enjoy your favorite coffee. Try a small for $1.99. America runs on Dunkin'. From the moment you see it, it commands your respect. You can feel its immense power. The only way to master it is to venture inside. Go ahead, dive in. The GMC Sierra. We are professional grade. Step up to GMC and pay no interest for 72 months on all 2017 GMC Sierra double cab models. GMC. We are professional grade. I was dreaming of bigger things and want to leave my old life behind. Freedom is never far away. Take one drive in the most awarded and best-selling SUV brand and discover that the world is your backyard. Hurry in for great deals now at the Jeep Drive and Discover event. Now get $4,000 total cash allowance or 0% financing for 60 months on the 2017 Jeep Cherokee. Add a burst of real fruit refreshment to your iced tea or iced green tea. Try Dunkin's new blackberry or mango pineapple fruited iced teas today. America runs on Dunkin'.
For the USA, Becky Sauerbrunn will wear the captain's armband today. She's the only U.S. player to play every minute of all six games played in 2017. Kickoff is next, USA versus Norway. Hey, hey, hey! That one right there. For those who create their own path, always unstoppable. Don't let this whisper fool you. Inside, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs about FanDuel Golf. Let's hear what some real fans have to say. I prefer playing against my friends because who doesn't like beating the pants off their friends? FanDuel has live scoring so you can easily track your players. Many of these contests start at just $1. FanDuel Golf. Pick your contest, pick your players before the first round, and watch golf like never before. Try FanDuel today. Win or play again on us. We'll credit your entry fee if you don't win your first contest up to $120. Go to FanDuel.com and use promo code SAND. Heineken tastes perfect every single time, and that doesn't happen by accident. It takes 15 years to become a Heineken brewmaster, almost as long as it took me to master this look. She came, she came to meet a man. She found an angel. Coo, 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 da, 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 da. What's his name now? Still practicing. It takes 15 years to become a Heineken Brewmaster. There's more behind the star. Continental tires are built for the road that connects you to all of life's journeys. And for nearly 150 years, we've been developing tires to fit your needs. Each Continental tire is designed to give you precise handling and traction in all seasons. And a quiet, comfortable ride wherever the road takes you. You're at your best when you're doing what you really love. We're at ours when we're helping you get there. Continental Tire, for what you do. Hi, I'm Paul. People ask why I switched to Sprint. Well, their network reliability is within 1% of the big guys, and they have the best price for unlimited among national carriers. And wait, are you watching this on the awesome iPhone 7? You gotta get iPhone 7 from Sprint, and they'll give you a second one on them. What are you doing? Go switch to Sprint. Who's he talking to? I don't know, but I'd better go to Sprint. Wait. Two iPhone 7s. Love you. Get Sprint Unlimited. And now, get iPhone 7 and get a second iPhone 7 on us. There are people just like you, but the way their minds work and how their bodies move will make your head spin. <laughs> Superhuman. Series premiere tomorrow on Fox. Two of the biggest stars in soccer face off at the 2017 FIFA Confederations Cup. Ronaldo and Portugal. Chicharito in Mexico. The FIFA Confederations Cup. Portugal, Mexico. Coverage begins next Sunday at 9.30 Eastern on FS1. Well, in recognition of LGBTQ Pride Month, this U.S. team is wearing pride-inspired rainbow numbers in their jerseys. These jerseys that you're seeing are red. The U.S. will be in white today. Fans can purchase customized jerseys with the rainbow numbers through USSoccerStore.com. U.S. men wore the rainbow numbers in their friendly against Venezuela, and USA women wore those same jerseys against Sweden, as they will tonight versus Norway. Big test coming just days after the one nothing win against Sweden. Yeah, I mean, it's a test, but again, this is still a, a preparation, experimentation phase for the U.S. I mean, they're really looking at getting players developing into certain roles on the pitch. I think Lavelle, Pugh are two of the ones that we talk about consistently. And it's going to be about what they can become as you head into the World Cup 2019. Ada Hegerberg is the player to focus on today. She is good for both club and country and is still a rising star. It's She's so, still a kid. She is. And I mean, in 2015, she really had her breakout. You see a good picture of her there. But she's grown from that moment. And, and I said it in the open, in the lineups. I mean, this is probably one of the top number nines in the world. Alex Morgan had to move to the left side when they played together at Lyon because Ada Hagerberg owned that position. Three years with a club team, Lyon, 115 goals in 99 
games played. We always talk about that ratio, Ali. You score one goal for every two games played. That's amazing. She's done better than that. And think about the cast of characters around her. So she does this on her own volition. I mean, she doesn't have the supporting cast that, that a U.S. team typically has, that a German team has, that a Japanese team has. And, and you're going to get to see it today. I mean, this is a player that in and around the box is lethal, and it's because she trains time and time again pushing her limits trying to figure out how she can be better and and she's a student of the game and i have talked to her about some of the players she watched Thierry Henry was one of her favorite players growing up and she loved his heading presence and and that's something that she actually has worked on and has gotten better in her game amy fern from england is our match referee this game means more to norway that love to get a result and the team that you're seeing today might be the team with a couple of changes that you'll see when they open up Euro 2017 against the host nation Netherlands. I think a result today has a big importance for them. I know they're downplaying it. They want to continue to improve as their coach Sjogren said, but to get a result will give them that confidence as they go into the Euros. And when I think of this Norwegian team, I kind of have a, a parallel on the men's side with Bale and Wales heading into Euros in 20, back last year in 2016, where you can ride the wave of some of these outstanding players. These, these are some of the best players in the world, and that doesn't happen all that often when you're coming out of such a small nation as Norway is, and they can ride that wave and do something special in the Euros if they can get the midfield piece right. Mjelda and Sauerbrunn wear the captain's armbands today. Carly Lloyd generally wears it. She's available on the subs bench today. The U.S. came here with only 19 players, and Williams, one of the 19, who plays for the North Carolina Courage, is out with an ankle injury. So the U.S. are dressing the 18 that they have. And there are several injuries. Players like Morgan Bryan, Tobin Heath, Alex Morgan, Ashlyn Harris. Well, A lot of good players left behind because of injury. With injury comes opportunity for some of these players. Look at an Abby Dalkemper getting to step in in the center back position. You're getting to see what Dunn can do in the flank, what Lavelle and Pugh can do. So, and in midfield with, without Brian, you're getting to see Long and Mew's partnership. I mean, it's just an opportunity for these players, and it almost makes it easier on Jill Ellis to decide who she gets to put out there because there's not a ton of options and a lot of depth right now. USA will be in the predominant white Norway red shirts and the dark shorts final huddle for the usa as they get ready for this two games in four days travel to europe players came from their respective nwsl clubs nwsl idle this weekend because of the international calendar we await the whistle from amy fern our match referee A small but noisy stadium. Seats just over 6,000. Underway. Long will push it back. Dal Kepper's first touch goes back to goal. And listen there with that strike to the right side for O'Hara. And it was given away quickly. Hovey's pass, give and go. Hovey playing it in front, swept away by Sauerbrunn. U.S. immediately under pressure after that ball was lost. Well, that's what Norway is going to look to do more often than not, I would think, is press this U.S. team. I mean, they've seen that when the U.S. is pressed, they typically have trouble playing out. Now, I'm not saying that's the way this game is going to progress. It's the first five minutes, and oftentimes you see some nerves in those beginning moments before players settle in. The U.S. will have a throw in. That's the player to watch out of Hegerberg. Terrific goal score. Deadly inside the 18. The long pass that's blocked. The U.S. not happy with their passing game. Head coach Jill Ellis talked about a disconnect, Alley, on Thursday. What was that about? I think everyone who watched saw the disconnect. I mean, they look so stretched out, and I would say in particular from their midfield to their front two, there was no one getting in those seams, layering it up, if you will, to try to connect the team and possess it long enough to get your outside backs in advance. Roll the finds Hansen. Runners in the box, but the foul against Short, who played professionally in Norway back in 2015. I like the 1v1 defending there by Short. Body off the player.
almost a corner kick here from where that ball is placed. And I think one of the things the U.S. has to be careful of is giving away silly fouls in their defensive third. Norway is so good on these set pieces. Ready for this free kick. Swung in. And that goes wide. Just wide of the target, so it's a goal kick for Nair. And just as I say that, very poor execution on that set piece, but they've got such great targets in Hagerberg. As Martin Sjogren, Swedish-born head coach, has made changes in the formation, wants them to play more of a possession style. And more variety in the attack. I mean, this team used to be so direct. They were in their 4-5-1, 4-3-3 attacking, and now it's, it's a little bit about more movement off the ball and building in their possession. By the way, we gave out a starting lineup before, and there's been a change. We'll have to find out why. Klingenberg is out there. I don't see Mallory Pugh, number seven in the white of the USA, as this ball is played long. Press on it. We'll try to get that information. There's Klingenberg on the ball. Broken up. Guessing that there was an illness or an injury in the warm-up because the lineup came out and Mallory Pugh's name was on it. Great pickup, JP. I think Klingenberg had a bit of a struggle against Sweden, so it's interesting to see her out there. Not a lot of depth on that left side for the U.S. Just told that Mallory Pugh had an injury in the warm-up. So let's hope it's not serious. It's something the Washington Spirit fans don't cool. want to hear either. Just signed as a professional. You got a chance to watch her play. I'm glad she stayed in this country instead of going over to Europe and play. And NWSL is happy as well. And I think it was the right decision for her developmentally as well because this is the most challenging league week in and week out. And because she's so athletically gifted, and when you go overseas, oftentimes you can just bring that element and you separate yourself by that fact alone, but here she's going to have to bring the tactical and technical nuances and develop that part of her game because everyone is so fast and athletic. Throwing for Vold for Norway. Off a miss hit. The U.S. will try to collect something there, but they can't. And Norway will look to counter. In the middle, it's Hegerberg, the sister of Ada. Play back by Long. Dal Kemper. Sauerbrunn. Right side. O'Hara. Lovell. Long high up the field. We'll push it back. Better possession here from the U.S. Moving the ball around quickly. It's short. Casey short. Sends one into the box. Couldn't find Crystal Dunn. Gathered in by Henson. She'll look to lead the attack. Numbers forward for Norway. Four in the attack, make it five now with Hansen collecting. Lays it off on this near side. Trushnos curling ball in. That was a weak effort, goes right into Nair. And both attacks somewhat similar for the U.S. and Norway. Both outside back squandered possession that was looking so nice for both teams. Kelly O'Hara, 96th cap. She'll play it forward, presses after it. Cut off there at the back by Melda. Marin Melda, the captain. A good cover by Melda, but I think that's something that's going to be on for the U.S. because the center backs don't have the, the quickest of feet. Norway will play it out of the back. No pressure yet from the U.S. Kroshnos. Mayelda. Wide right on this left side, Torshnoss holding there. Several of these players, better than a dozen, were on this World Cup side for Norway in Canada 2015. They lost in the knockout round to England. And I called that match, and I think that was an unfair result for Norway, in fact. I think they were the better side on the day. 
But a screamer, I believe it was Bronze who hit it from outside the box, ended their run. Kobe's pass back. Settled. Getting the Heidelbergs pass ahead now on this left side. Nobody home out on the wing. And Harold will have that one covered. Eighth minute of play. Zeros on the scoreboard. This used to be the USA's top rivalry. They've only played Canada and China more than Norway. And Norway's beaten them 19 times. No one else has done that. It's a good stat, JP. It is. I mean, this rivalry was the largest when I came onto the scene for the U.S., and I think it's petered out over the years, but with this group, with an Otto Hagerberg running the show with Hansen in midfield, I think this group has the potential to do something special. It's just a matter of whether they can get that depth to make deep runs in tournaments. Picked off. The U.S. trying to push it up with Press leading it. Done on one side, Lavelle, the middle, and the other. Press will lay it back to Long. Dunn missing the target. Dunn just coming back from a stint with Chelsea, where they won the spring title over in England. But now really has nowhere to play as they're out done with their season. Just shot way up, way up target. But you could see Norway immediately get back in defensive shape when they turn that ball over. They know how big transition is against the U.S. When they do that, though, they've got to get pressure on those players. You can't let Dunn sit at the top of the box wide open like that. Too easy. Torsten has pushed it back. Played back by Berga. Goalkeepers are very experienced. Hale Smith. Three players on this Norway squad. 100-plus caps. Given away needlessly there. Throw in for the U.S. You can see what Norway wants to do. They get those outside backs rotated forward, keep their two center backs staying home. And their three midfield stay back as well. Klingenberg wanted back. Lavelle pushing it back. Klingenberg all the way back. And here's where the tempo for the U.S. has to pick up. When they change the point of attack, can they probe quickly if it's not on OK possess it, but it's got to be quick. Heritage well, Dunn bringing it towards the middle. Ali Long. Dal Kemper. Kept on the deck by Mewis, but it's go going out of play. Here in the 10th minute, how similar is this game to the game against Sweden? Well, how different? You know, I think tempo-wise, it looks a lot faster. I think that... The U.S. has been able to condense. They they just look more tied in defensively and offensively to start the game. I mean, only 10 minutes in. But I do think you're seeing similar elements where both Mewis and Long will stay home. And that happened against Sweden. That was a problem. That was one of the reasons they were so disjointed. They didn't get anyone in that kind of attacking mid role. But I see Lavelle popping up in those spaces, and that's going to help solve it. But they were looking for dynamic play on the wings and then brought in central with Lavelle on one side and Pugh on the other. Klingenberg's role, I would imagine, would be different, a different type player than Pugh. But she fades inside anyways. Even when she plays that left back, she will come inside. I think that's her natural tendency, so I think she will do that. However, I don't know that you want her on the ball as much as you want a, a Dunn or, or a Lavelle. Off the pick there. Pushing it forward was Hobie. Henson. Hovey plays for the Boston Breakers, playing it in front, swept away by Casey Short. Noe is finding some room, though. And it's no secret when you play the U.S., those pockets behind the outside back are on. I mean, they go in a little in, one, two, between Hanson and Hovey there, get in behind O'Hara because she's pushed up in an offensive position, and that space is on. That's where the U.S. is vulnerable. 12th minute, Norway with this throw in. Long, perhaps. Nope. Torsten will go back instead to Hansen. Squaring it. No room there, so it's forced all the way back. Berga. Maelda. Berga keeping it on the ground. Cleared away. Tended for press. Headed forward. Out of Higgerberg. Pushed it to the outside. 
Ingrid Vold, defended by Klingenberg, spurred. Maelda, forced back by Press. Berger. This is fine by the U.S. The U.S. wants to force Norway to go around the outside. They think Hagerberg and Hansen in the middle are the most dynamic pieces to this Norwegian attack. Torch this nice cut inside. And then it's played wide. Lieutenant by to Hegerberg. That's the danger, though, of Norway. She said it should have been a corner. You said it, JP, because I know that's where they perhaps are the most dangerous, but they are so good when they get around the edge and serve that box, especially with Hegerberg. I mean, she ha just has a knack for finding the spaces in there. Mark tightly on that one, however. She brings it every day to training. That's what a coach Martin Chauvin told us. That's one of the reasons why she's still improving. Coming up later tonight, 7.30 Eastern. We'll all be watching this one. Mexico versus the United States. USA doing much better these days. We'll see what the altitude does really to both teams because a lot of these Mexican players, Ali, no longer have that advantage since they play in Europe. Right, and the U.S. is coming off of a game in Denver at altitude, so they're going to be acclimatized. I know it's not the same, but having said that, I, we talked about it. I think the U.S. can steal some points tonight. Long foul is given there from Hovi. 14th minute. Scoreless here. U.S. coming off that one nothing win over Sweden on Thursday. Klingenberg holding there. Short. He's been playing as a center back and now moved back to left back. Well, she's probably the team's best defender 1v1. Where she needs to grow is in her offensive ability, her ability to connect passes and not be a liability because I think teams are going to start to scout her and recognize that they, they want her to be the one to play out for the U.S. That's where they can pick some passes off and, and launch a counter. It's Rose Lavelle, just 22 years of age. Goals in back-to-back -back games. Two goals now in five appearances for the U.S. play and with Lavelle JP I mean yes she scored those goals but you think of her as being the creator the one who can beat the lines the one who can set up that final pass and she's just so dangerous and she's going to develop more and more as she gets more opportunities Jill Ellis is trying not to put too much pressure on players like Lavelle and Pew wants to see them grow and she's given them a lot of responsibility on the offense just like Bruce Serena has done with Christian Pulisic giving him the keys to the car, if you will. Some people deserve the keys. Yeah. I would say they are fair, fair game for that role. All the way back to goal. And Seth will put it back into play. Left sideline. Torchness has room on the wing. Dunn will try to close it down. Spurt. Hansen comes back. The U.S. have everybody back now defensively. Switch to the left side. Torshness. She's found some room. Plays it across. Not a good clearance from short. Torshness got it back. Lifted long, and that's too far for Hobie. Oh, but this is such a different Norwegian team than I am accustomed to seeing. I mean, their patience and their possession, their expansive shape in the attack is something that have never been traits of this side. And you can just see the influence immediately. I mean, six months under Martin Sjogren, and they've changed this much already. Just four camps. Off Hegerberg. 22-year-old Rose Lavelle. Sheldon knows. He scouted the U.S. team, so he knows what Lavelle can do and others. Only in her sixth cap. Almost getting through his Hovi. That's O'Hara for Dunn. Norway trying to pin the U.S. Oh, that was sweet from Lavelle. She has one of those in every game, at least one of those moves. 
Maelda will win it back though for Norway. It's a changing Norway side. Several players retired right after the Women's World Cup. Players like Gud Bronson. So they've had a mix and match. Some of the veterans stayed on, but a lot of newcomers to this squad. Uncle Branson was one of the midfielders, and, and that's an area that Shogren told us is something he's looking to iron out and figure out who's going to be the those three, four players that he sticks with heading into the Euros. Casey Short plays for Chicago in the NWSL. They're in second place in the standings. Ooh, and they look good. North Carolina is number one. They were the defending champs. Last year they played as the Western New York Flash. U.S. will win the ball with Mewis. Held up by LaBelle. Waited for Klingenberg to get open. 18th minute, Klingenberg. Star is a left back against Sweden. That's her normal position. Long, keeping it wide. Sauber, that's as high up the field as she's been during the run of play so far. Del Kemper. And that's well wide of O'Hara and out of play. Big test for Dal Kemper today. I think so for sure. I think there's a spot that is is definitely out there for to be taken. And she's so good on the ball. Not that last possession, obviously, but she's one of those players that connects a lot of passes that you actually forget how good she is defensively. But I think she can fill into this role very nicely. She's been outstanding for North Carolina. Press done in front, and it's cleared away for a corner. USA's first. Maelda knocked it out. Just a good look at Press pulling off that line, playmaking, done getting around the edge. I like the idea to go near post. That looks like that's Klingenberg coming all the way across there. Happened so quickly, the U.S. didn't have an opportunity to get great box organization, but almost got one. We did see a shot of Mallory Pugh on that U.S. bench. And Sydney Leroux also there. Her first time back with the national team since 2015. Had a child last year, so that pregnancy took her out of the NWSL season and also away from the U.S. women's national team. Lavelle to take this corner in the 20th. She'll float one up. Second ball comes down. Press collects. Have a second try at it. Sauerbrunn cutting. Laying it off for O'Hara. Kelly O'Hara drives it into the box. That's cleared away. Norway now will try to get it upfield. Press recovered it. Back for short. Del Kemper. Mewis. Mewis has started every game this year. Second only to Sauerbrunn in minutes played. Well, she's one of those that will develop nicely for this U.S. team with the more minutes she gets. Bump of the ball. Dunn goes down. Ball goes out. Torshness was defending. Well done by Torshness there to stay with Dunn. Looks like a foul. Clips her from behind at the last second. You know how explosive Dunn is and with Torshness to be able to hang on there. Let's get your take in the first 20 minutes. I think overall, you know, conceding opportunities, the U.S. has done that in a lot of games this year, but they're finding their way in as, as the game's gone on, and I still think a better tempo, better rhythm is something that's going to behoove them. They've got to get more numbers around the ball, and, and players, like you look at Pulisic, the way he did for the men, beat some lines on the dribble the way Nagby does. Hegerberg tried to find Bold, and that's picked up by Short. Klingenberg. And immediately they cut off that sideline. It's a good job from Norway. U.S. tried to get out of it. Norway wouldn't let them. Hobie, quick ball ahead. It was intended for Andrina Hegerberg. But it didn't work. I think these U.S. players are capable of taking on, beating that midfield line, opening things up. Crystal done a perfect example. Nice ball slotted to Kelly O'Hara. The right back high up the field. Back for Dunn. It's too far away from her. Hansen coming back for Norway. Holding, waited patiently for the help, and the help is now coming. Isaksen. Nice ball slotted. Hegerberg! And it falls nicely for Alyssa Nair, but that was the best opportunity for either side 
today. Easily a great opportunity for Norway, and it happens in a transition moment. Here you think the U.S. is coming down the one side with a little one-two, and then a misplayed pass really launches the counter for Norway. And you can see how explosive they are. I thought Hegerberg was going to have a go from that angle, but she chose wisely in trying to slip that across. But well done by the U.S. to be marked up on those players. The Nair clearance. Dunn looks for it. Here in the 23rd minute, Kelly O'Hara will push it back. Sauerbrunn, Dahlkamper. And I just want to see the U.S. center mids, the Mewis, the Long, get on the ball more in those situations. Demand it. Change of pace. Get it in that pocket of seam, beating that, those front runners, right? Get faced up and then start to pick apart Norway. So Russia versus New Zealand on Fox next week. Confederations Cup begins. Mexico would love to win that title if they could. They are the CONCACAF representative. And that's one of the reasons why they played this game today at Azteca because some of the other teams in the group are playing towards the middle of the week. But they had to push that game up because they are off to Russia. It's a very capable team of lifting that trophy. Ball out for a throw in for Norway. Krushnas. Long throw in. So far, not that many touches for Ada Hegerberg. And they don't mind if she has the ball that far out. That's her sister on the ball. Andrina waits for the help. Hegerberg. Look at those step overs. She was doubled up. U.S. knows the threat there, so they sent a second player over. And as good as she is in the box, she's very capable of taking players on 1v1. Good defending by O'Hare just to stand her up. Hegerberg, a teammate of Alex Morgan at Lyon, a very talented side there. Torshness, and Norway will get a corner here. I mean, Norway, as much as they've talked about going down the center of the park, they want that variety in attack, and you're seeing them get around the edges of the U.S., forcing those corners. Carolina Hansen, who plays for Wolfsburg, will play it short right at the near post. It's intended for Hovey. Hansen will have another go at it. Looking to create with that cross. It's close to three players from Norway. But none of them could get a good grip of it. Mielda. And that's why it was an air. Right away, Nair tries to help jumpstart the offense with the outlet to press. Press to the halfway line. And she's been so good for Chicago coming off that back line and getting faced up, running at the opponent. I think if she can do a little bit more of that today, going to be a brighter influence in this match. Sauerbrunn from Dal Kemper, 26 minutes, zeros in the board. USA versus Norway. Norway has one more game to go before they start the Euros, and that's against France away. Pick two tough opponents heading into Euros to see where they're at. USA and France. Sent into the box. Press. Cutting it back. Klingenberg. Couldn't get a shot off on her own. Drops it off. And that's well wide. Sam Ewis coming through. And that build up by the U.S. all started with Sam Ewis. She's the one who gets on the end here with a strike. But she played a lovely way to pass out wide to Klingenberg. And you saw the U.S., the little combination, find some space in, on the inside once they kicked it wide. But that's what I want to see more out of, those two center mids dictating this game. Yes, I know Lavelle can break things open, but they've got to be the ones to find her, to start to spread open Norway so they can penetrate centrally. Long and Mewis have been playing together centrally. There's a lot of depth on this team when you think that Morgan Bryan, a starter, is injured. Tobin Heath, a starter, is injured. So when those players get back, all of a sudden, there's a lot of talented players in that U.S. midfield. It's going to be interesting to see who Ellis gives the nod to. I mean, I know part of this is development and experimentation, so it doesn't necessarily mean anything if you start, but 
nonetheless, it'll be interesting to see what chemistry develops. Long, pushing it back. Short. It's knocked away by Norway, but it's going to go out of play. Throw in for the U.S. in the 28th minute. I think against Sweden, with, with Dunn and Lloyd up top, that chemistry piece was lacking. I, I'm not so certain with the Long and Mewis how their chemistry is evolving just yet. I think those are partnerships that are so important to this U.S. side. And yes, it's early, but you want to see flashes of, of brilliance come together. I think Lavelle and O'Hare actually had nice chemistry on this right side. Norway back on it. Up the sideline for Hovey. She'll cut it into the middle. Hegerberg. Stepping back, leaving it off. Torsnos. Pressure on the ball. That worked from U.S. Launched the other way. And this near will watch it go out for a goal kick. You note some of the Norway players have different names in the backs of their jerseys. Some of them have three full names on the roster, but I assure you we're going with the correct ones. So ten is Hansen. Short. Dal Kemper. Almost at the half hour mark. I say trying to create something here with Klingenberg. A late starter for the injured. Mallory Pugh injured in the warm-up. Hansen. Intended for Vold. It's going to go out of play. Throw in here for Norway. And GP, you asked how this was evolving 20 minutes in, 30 minutes in. I, I still think lack of execution technically has been something that was a problem against Sweden. I think that's still been the case here today against Norway on that last play with Megan Klingenberg does a nice move to beat her player and then just a poor square giveaway that really could have been a counterattack moment. Try to get more touches on the ball for Lavelle. I, I think you continue with spreading the pitch out, but then you've got to find her centrally. It's up to Long and Mewis to start dictating the tempo. Do it quicker, pull Norway out of their shape so you can find her in that seam. Torsnes. Oh, she bumped into O'Hara. No foul called. The ball went out and it's going to be a corner. Torsnes has been very impressive at the start of this game. And a great seam right here outside O'Hare. A lovely first touch, in fact, to cut inside. And then she just bulldozes over O'Hara. Physicality was never something Norway lacked. No. Nope. Still don't. Going back to the early 90s. Corner driven in near post. Second ball. One in the air by Short. Sent right back. Isaksen. And the flag's up. And U.S. was doing a nice job on that second ball. They were all marked up, aware of where their player was as that resurface came in, pulled them offside. Nair will push it short. That one didn't have enough on it. Hovey took it away from O'Hara. Nair has to come out. Hansen came out. U.S. dodged one there. The distribution error almost came back to bite the U.S. It's that fine line you live on. You want to possess out of the back, but you've got to do so in an intelligent way. Not like that. <laughs> that was on cue. To illustrate your point. <laughs> goalkeeper to goalkeeper. I always go back to why do you want your goalkeeper's playmaker? You don't, ask, right? Ask Pep Guardiola. That's what he wants for Manchester City. He just signed another goalkeeper, supposedly very good with his feet. Here's Press. Down this right side for Dunn. Torsnos, who's covered so much ground, won that ball. Now pressure on the ball from Dunn. Others must also pressure if Dunn's going first. And with more urgency, I mean, you're in there. You Don't give up on that play. Dunn just let it fade away because I think she didn't feel the support of her team. I mean... She's got to be the one to continue leading that charge, and then everyone's got to tie in. I mean, that was something that they lacked against Sweden, was being tied in defensively, pressing as a unit. 
felt like they always had one toe in the water and they weren't necessarily committed to those moments. A throw in for Klingenberg. She have to get the return that's blocked. Lavelle. Press. Allie Long. Right side at Sauerbrunn. Again, trying to go higher up the field as an option. O'Hara. Norway try to angle her options away. Sauerbrunn, nice ball in. Mewis. Stretching was pressed, couldn't get it. Elmsmith off her line to grab it. It's a great test for the U.S. We know how they've struggled historically breaking down teams. They get a lot of players behind the ball in their defensive third and who can be the players that step up with that change of pace with the impetus to beat a line to break things open we've always talked about Lavelle as being that player of the future can she do it today Torshnus defended by Dunn squaring it into the middle Henson stayed with it then went down Sauerbrunn in traffic did well just to get that one out not to lose it where she was you're right she clips it over their feet sends that out of bounds but I'd say Norway thus far have had the more dangerous opportunities. Throw in for Torshness. 28-year-old. Very versatile player for Norway. Got it in for Hobie. Back for Torshness. Forced back by Dunn. Look out here. Isak Son playing it in front. Swept away. Dal Camper in the end did well to not let that ball get behind her. But Norway's having a lot of success on this left side, getting around the edge. This little slip pass. Isaksen is just sitting in that gap between those backs. Brilliantly weighted. Hegeberg blocked. Lavelle takes off. Talented Boston Breakers midfielder going forward. And that last touch too heavy and lost it. Fights to try to win it back and does. So a good second effort from Lavelle. Press on it. The way it was laid out to us yesterday, Press was going to be playing up higher. She's been anything but that today. She's drifting way back to receive balls. You're right, and, and Dunn was going to also push up high with her, thinking those two were going to look to use their pace to spring in behind. But I think that's what Press tends to do if she's not seeing the ball, is she tends to fade back into midfield, try to get her feet, which is not a bad thing, because I do think she's so good when she's faced up running at that back line. But the U.S. just hasn't really been able to possess it long enough to find her early high in those top in those spots. Henson. Good on the ball. Straight ahead. Hovey on the left. She was looking for Anna Hegerberg, and it's another Norway corner. Waves of attack right now by Norway. You have to say they are in different phases. We talked about it, but they're getting ready for the Euro. So I I expected them to be sharp today. They look a lot sharper than the U.S. thus far. And the U.S., you know, the result isn't as important as it is for Norway. Hansen drives it again. They're going near post in all these corners. None have worked so far. Torsnos in the 36th minute. Got it out wide. Hansen slows it down. Looks for options. Good on the dribble. Plays it inside and that's cleared away he's off Mewis it's coming right back and Nair will make the easy play you said it JP I don't know why they're going near post on all those corner kicks because they do have such a tall imposing threat in Hagerberg at the back post with her heading ability possession is even the U.S. has improved their possession stat according to statistics from Opta when they went from the three back to the four back. Their possession improved by eight to ten percent. Yeah, it's possession where though, right? Is it along yes, that back line? True. Is it in the attacking third? They've also won games too. Remember when they went with the three in the back, <laughs> had those two big losses in the She Believes Cup. Since then, they've won their last three. Outscoring opponents 10 to 1. 
I still stand by the fact that I don't know that the three back is a terrible idea for this group. I think they're capable of pulling it off with the right personnel. I mean, right. when they get in their attacking shape and they are in a 3-5-2, I think that's when this team can look the most dangerous and at their best. And maybe it's just the fluidity of a system that this U.S. will benefit from more so than coming out in a rigid three back. Well, they have time to develop it if they want to. Absolutely. And if you're struggling in depth wise to find outside backs, you know, it is a reason that you look at playing perhaps three center backs because you feel like you're strong there. In the 38th minute, zeros on the board, USA versus Norway. Norway have looked the more threatening of the two sides. Nair to the halfway line, just looking for long. Lavelle leaves it. There's Lavelle on the return. Out of the University of Wisconsin finds Dunn. It's a nice run by Klingenberg with switch to the side, but the flag's up. Oh, but that's a perfect imprint and picture of how the U.S. wants to play. Nice little easy ball back by Lavelle. Then she pulls herself wide to receive that ball again. Finds Dunn in that little slip channel. And then Klingenberg all the way from the left side making the run across. Good fluidity up top by them. 39th minute, Norway will play it out of the back. Last game for the U.S. until they start another tournament, their second one of this calendar year at home. They'll take on Australia, Brazil, and Japan at three West Coast venues. So strength of schedule, very good for the U.S. They don't have any meaningful tournaments coming up, but they're trying to play some games that mean something to them. Torsnos, O'Hara stays with her. Torsnos lets it go, thinks she's got a corner. U.S. thinks otherwise. It is a corner. And again, the attack for Norway coming down the left side. Time and time again right now, they're finding space inside that rotation by the U.S. That's him again near post, and Nair somehow stopped that. Looked like it was going to go in. Lavelle on it. And then the big clearance. Did that ball have something on it or what? I don't know if it takes a deflection here because it just catches her. She sees it late, in fact. Lucky her feet were up there and got that deflection. Torsnos. Nair made three saves the other night in getting her ninth career shutout on Thursday against Sweden. Bold versus Short. Try to find Hansen, U.S. wins it, Klingenberg. Press, U.S. And I think that decision by Mewis is not right. You've got Norway, you can see all their numbers were on that side of the pitch. Mewis has to have the awareness that the ball's gotta come to this near side. Torsnos. <laughs> Pushed across by Berga. Mayelda. Bold for Norway. 41st minute. Scoreless from Norway as this ball goes out of play. It's a USA throw-in. We're allowed six subs in this friendly. So we'll expect to see both teams go to their benches in the second half. You'd almost think the U.S. more than Norway coming off the playing Sweden two days ago. Short kept that one in play in front of assistant referee. Press. And all the way back in midfield. Long. Way out was O'Hara and open. O'Hara on the move. Trying to get it through the legs of Hobie. Hobie's back on the ball. Short in the circle. And it's going to go out for a Norway throw in. Deep in their own territory. They didn't lose a game in Euro qualifying. Seven wins and a draw. And outscored opponents 29 to 2. So they were dominating, largely due to Hegeberg. Ten goals in qualifying. A 
Well, they have quality. You can see it. And they've got the discipline. I mean, their ability to, or commitment to get those numbers behind the ball, slow down the transition of the U.S. has been great. Christian Ross by Berga, Mayelda. 43rd minute. Scoreless here. We'll have highlights from this game coming up at halftime. We'll also go back to the famous Azteca. Rob Stone and the group down there. Big day for them, long day for them, because that kickoff USA Mexico is several hours away. Mexico versus the US tonight, 7.30 Eastern on FS1. Well, those guys play tonight, Chicharito and Dempsey. Chicharito did not play in the game against Honduras. Dempsey started, came out during the game. Substitution was made by Bruce Arena. Could have been with an eye towards this game today. Could have. We'll find out soon. I think when lineups come out. All right, with Osorio and his rotations, you don't know if that was with an eye towards this game either, but you'd have to think so. Mewis, Sauerbrunn, Dal Camper, 44th minute. USA defensively has bent, but they've not been broken so far. Noise had a couple of good looks at least. Short. Well, they've conceded the flanks at times, but they've been getting back defensively centrally and marking up in the box and not allowing Norway to be free inside the penalty area. So, you know, the, when you're playing these matches, you know you're going to concede something. The U.S. is willing to concede, rotating those outside backs forward and leaving those outside pockets open. It's just a matter of being disciplined enough to mark up in the box and and really try to slow down those transition moments. Adrina Hegebert is fouled. Will they want O'Hara to not go forward as much, or will they want someone to help cover for O'Hara on that side? Because that's the side that Norway's exploiting. Well, I think they, they've been so worried about the central attack, keeping their two center mids and center backs in a block. Norse did the USA a favor there with that giveaway, and Klingenberg starts the attack. So you know that, yes, okay, we're going to concede something. We're willing to concede the flank space as long as we're marked up in the box. Too far for Ada Hegerberg. With the chest of Blanc. O'Hara. Given away. Spurt. Intercepted by Long. Lavelle. For Dunn, some of these passes off the mark. And to the, the wrong movement, the wrong spaces by these players. These players are moving into one spot, and they're playing it against their movement. You've got to lead each other into the spaces you want them to play at, into, away from the pressure of the defender so they can't stick that big toe in there. Time running out here. Let's get your take on the first half. Poor tempo by the U.S., not a lot of creativity in the final third. I thought Norway looked more exciting getting around the edges in those flank spaces. But again, lots to build on. 2019's far away. We'll come back. We'll show you highlights from this game. And then there's also going to be another trip to Azteca. Come back with us. It's scoreless here at the half. And now during the Kia Summers on Us sales event, you won't have to make any payments for five months. I like the sound of that. Yeah, I just think everyone should get more out of their summer. More summer, huh? Woo! And you get 0% APR for up to 66 months! So you like the car? Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. OK, great. Yeah. Imagine what you can do with five months of freedom for payments. Hurry into your local Kia dealer today. The heat will wear you out real quick. And we've been through some hot ones. It's very physical. You gotta take care of your body and stay hydrated because every moment matters. That's why I drink Advocare Rehydrate. I've got a job to do.
There's nothing traditional about my small business. So when it comes to technology, I need someone that understands my unique needs. My Dell Small Business Advisor has gotten to know our business so well that it feels like he's a part of our team. With one phone call, he sets me up with tailored products and services. And when my advisor is focused on my tech, I can focus on my small business. this whisper fool you inside i'm screaming at the top of my lungs about FanDuel golf let's hear what some real fans have to say yeah i'm really into watching golf now because every stroke counts with FanDuel golf you can actually play through the app with your friends it makes it more exciting there are many contests that you can play at every price point and starting at one dollar FanDuel golf pick your contest pick your players before the first round and watch golf like never before. Try FanDuel today. Win or play again on us. We'll credit your entry fee if you don't win your first contest up to $120. Go to FanDuel.com and use promo code SCRATCH. Liberty Mutual stood with me when this guy got a flat tire in the middle of the night. Hold on, Dad. Liberty did what? Yeah, Liberty Mutual 24-hour roadside assistance helped him to fix his flat so he could get home safely. My dad says our insurance doesn't have that. Don't worry. I know what a lug wrench is, Dad. Is this a lug wrench? Maybe. You can leave worry behind when Liberty stands with you. Liberty stands with you. Liberty Mutual Insurance. All sports have fans, but soccer isn't like all sports. Soccer has supporters, and they're a different breed and type. They call themselves outlaws or armies. They show up for club and country to sing, chant, or march to the beat of their own drum. Literally. These aren't fair weather fans. They're wear a scarf in any weather fans. There are a million reasons why supporters love soccer, but supporters are the reason why we do. This was one of the few opportunities that the U.S. had against Norway today. A shot from distance from Sam Mewis goes wide of the target, scoreless at the half. Welcome back, everyone, to our coverage here on Fox with Ali Wagner. I'm JP Della Camera. USA versus Norway. Scoreless after 45 minutes of play. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first 45 minutes. I mean, the U.S. didn't have a lot of things going forward. This is one of the moments where something split open with Dunn sitting in that seam. Strikes across that, doesn't get that one on frame. But a lot of their opportunities were coming from outside the box because you could see Norway getting back defensively. And then Norway was getting around the edge time and time again. They earned this corner kick, and that one almost sneaks in near post. It catches Nair. You can see she just reads it late. She thinks her player's going to head that out. They don't. Lucky to get that deflection out of goal. The scene shifts to Azteca when we come back. Rob and the guys have a preview of tonight's big match, USA-Mexico. We all drive, <laughs> some just for the fun of it. PlayStation Days of Play with a limited edition gold PS4 at 249, discounted games, and more. It's nine days of epic deals. Heineken tastes perfect every single time, and that doesn't happen by accident. It takes 15 years to become a Heineken brewmaster, almost as long as it took me to master this look. She came, she came to meet a man. She found an angel. What's his name now? Still practicing. It takes 15 years to become a Heineken brewmaster. There's more behind the star. We are 
provides the best entertainment and internet experience. Best in home Wi Fi experience lets you stream on five devices at once, brings you Netflix on X1, and 75 megabits per second in the most popular packages? No question. Xfinity stacks up where ATT doesn't. Get all these great reliable features and fast internet for an incredible price. Get up to 75 megabits per second download speed. Compare that to ATT and get X1 and Voice for $30 each for one year when you bundle all three. Call 1 800 Xfinity today. Family life is crazy. And to keep a bit of control, I got the new EcoBee 4 Smart Thermostat. Now I can control the temperature of my home from anywhere with my phone. And EcoBee has room sensors that help manage hot or cold spots. And best of all, it has Alexa built in. Alexa, add stain remover to the shopping list. Stain remover added to your shopping list. The new EcoBee 4. Make your home work. Can you feel something without touching it? See something with your eyes closed. When everything is designed around you, the driver, you can. The new Mazda 3. Now get the 2017 Mazda 3 for 0% APR for 60 months plus $1,000 APR bonus cash. The sun pounding down on a now empty Azteca Stadium where the U.S. has just one win in 22 attempts. But burgeoning American star Christian Pulisic thinks that number is going to change tonight. Uh, it's going to be a tough one down there in Mexico especially, but we really want some revenge on them from when they got us earlier this year. So uh, we're, we're really confident going to that game and we're going to come out with a win there too. And that quote from Pulisic was Thursday night after the U.S.'s 2-0 victory over Trinidad and Tobago. Both those goals courtesy of the 18-year-old from Hershey, Pennsylvania. Rob Stone, Jermaine Jones, Fernando Fiore, Alexi Lala still here with you from Azteca. Let's talk about Pulisic. He feels a win is in order. He's been getting a lot of hype lately as well, Jermaine. Is he worth the hype? Yeah, definitely. He's special, and he shows that in the games he plays. And... Um, but I love on this kid that he's hungry for the next game always. And this is why he, he, he hit out that note. So we will see what, what comes this, this game. Interesting for many people that uh, that soundbite from uh, Pulisic was really strong. We will get the three points in Azteca. Maybe it's because he didn't play so well in Columbus. Yeah, for the first time, uh, Mexico beat U.S. in Columbus. So, hey, revenge may come uh, sweet and soon. They didn't do it there, they can do it here. <laughs> he, he is worth the hype. And I know in, a, in America sometimes uh, we, we worry about too, putting too much pressure on a young player. It's okay. He can, he can withstand it. He's, he's mature beyond his years. Uh, you're not going to break him. Uh, to have higher expectations and whether it is uh, a game last week in Denver or, or a couple days ago in Denver or here in the Azteca you should expect Christian Pulisic to have a positive impact is he going to be the best player on the field all the time is he going to win every game no. no but this is a guy to keep your eye, eye on this is a hype train that you can get on and, and be assured, assured that it's heading in the right direction for, uh, provided that he stays physically healthy four goals three assists in his last four games that will provide plenty of hype from the outside circles Christian Pulisic and the U.S. men's national team 730 Eastern we begin our coverage here from Azteca Stadium. Plenty more on the post game show, including we'll hear from Bruce Arena. But coming up next here on Fox, the second half of the U.S. and Norway. Both teams looking for that first goal. Hi, I'm Paul. And I used to ask if you could hear me now with Verizon, but I switched to Sprint. Hey, are you happy that you switched? Yes. Their network reliability is within 1% of Verizon, and their unlimited plan is half what you pay with Verizon for a family of four. Half. Yeah. That's right, it's half. You could save over $1,000 in the first year. You've been ripping us off. Just think what you could do with that money. I'd buy a new set of golf clubs. Thank you. Vacation. Unlimited, $22.50 per month per line. That's 50% off Verizon Unlimited rates. Don't let a 1% difference cost you twice as much. Sorry about the hold up, folks. We have some congestion on the runway. And I'm being told it'll be another 15, maybe 20 minutes, and we will have you on your way. Runway models on the runway? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Evan saved by switching to Geico. I would not wear that lace. <laughs> I don't know. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.
You probably think Chrissy Teigen drinks expensive vodka at exclusive clubs. But I don't. Because let's be real, Smirnoff makes great tasting vodka without any of the nonsense, like velvet ropes, three foot tall frosted bottles, sexy robots, sparklers, ice sculptures, VIP sections, controversial charcuterie. Smirnoff, the most awarded brand in vodka over the past decade. Albino house cat. Made in America. Cool club people. Ramada, say hello to a whole new way to feel welcome. And to global destinations where everyone goes the extra mile. Say hello to Red. Stay two nights and save 20%, plus earn 1,000 bonus points. Book now at ramada.com. The goal of every allergy sufferer is zero nasal allergy symptoms, and nothing gets you closer than Nasacort. Unlike antihistamines that target one cause of your symptoms, Nasacort stops more. And stopping more gets you closer to zero. Nasacort stops more of what makes you miserable. And now during the Kia Summers on Us sales event, you won't have to make any payments for five months. I like the sound of that. Yeah, I just think everyone should get more out of their summer. More summer, huh? Woo! And you get 0% APR for up to 66 months! Woo! So you like the car? Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. Okay, great. Yeah. Imagine what you can do with five months of freedom for payments. Hurry into your local Kia dealer today. We are Mark Can you feel something without touching it? See something with your eyes closed. When everything is designed around you, the driver, you can. The new Mazda 3. Now get the 2017 Mazda 3 for 0% APR for 60 months plus $1,000 APR bonus cash. Scoreless at the half, the USA with two total shots, and neither one of those were on target. Norway had the edge in possession, and Alley, Norway's attack, over 53% of their attack started on that left side of the field. Yeah, and a lot of it was coming off of these transition moments when Kayla O'Hara is rotated up top. You can see those three players are launching it time and time again. Hanson, Hovey, and, Ot and Hagerberg, excuse me, and they're having success getting around this left side. Here it is again, on the counterattack moment, Kelly O'Hara is up the pitch somewhere, and here comes Norway down the left side. Nice little inside out run by Hagerberg, and they almost pull it off near post there. Lack of connection, but that's where Norway was having success, just in those transition moments and breaking down this left side. Well, things have to change for the U.S. The two shots, not good enough, certainly, and, and both of them off target. Norway were the better side in the first 45 minutes of play. We'll see if either side makes any changes as we get ready to start the second half we did see lindsay horan so i believe she has come in but let's wait to get that confirmed second half officially underway on that whistle off short done Pressure on the ball, Horan is into the game. And we'll see where she plays. The other night, she came in for Carly Lloyd, played at the position that she used to play in. We've seen her more in that holding midfielder role in previous games. And I think she's coming into the same exact spot for Rose Lavelle up top as that number 10 player, bringing that heading presence, partnered with the pace of, of press. And you'd have to think part of that's got to be that Lavelle tracked a lot of ground in that game against Sweden. Both her and Pugh did. She's got to have tired legs, and I don't think she was making the impact in the first half that, that we expected out of her. Ball pushed wide to the right side. Lavelle is after it. 
Long and Mewis is still out there, so was it Klingenberg? Ah, you're right, JP. Still waiting to get official confirmation. We didn't see the sub as it was made. Short on it. Well, if that's the case, we'll follow and see where Hoan is playing because that's not a position that you would think she would play, but Jill Ellis looking for some versatility to see who can play where and how well. I think that makes Lavelle pushes wide. We'll see how it plays out, but she'll push back out to that wide position. But again, it's fluidity in the attack and these players filling spaces as opposed to sticking to a flat-out roll. Done with it. Out wide, press in the box. It's played across, headed up the middle. Normally a dangerous spot. Norway dealt with it, but it's given right back to Dunn. We're still done. End line. And that's blocked. Mewis tags it, and again off target. Mewis starting this half pretty much the way the first half ended. Kjell Smith will move it to the left. So Klingenberg was the confirmed sub, only one change. No, he didn't make any. Right side, O'Hara. It's cut off, she'll recover. Lavelle off that cultured left foot, but it goes wide. Even she's off target today. And, and I think even as you see O'Hara streaking down the right flank, I mean, that's a, that's a good thing. But then the final pass, I mean, she just buries her head and she's whipping that ball in regardless of what's going on around her. I think if she spins out and tries to connect, it's going to be on more. The U.S. didn't have great box organization, and Norway had three players right in front of her there. So... Just better decision making in the final third and getting more players around the ball so they can combine to break this Norwegian team down. Press on it. Right side. She's had all kinds of room today. Kelly O'Hara on that right side. Back for long. So Jill Ellis only made that one change. She's trying to let these players sort it out for probably at least another 15 minutes or so. Short after it. That's blocked. Gathered in. Andrina Hegerberg will push it back. I mean, I expected more substitutions for sure at half. With not a lot at stake here, I think you didn't have a great start, but you're probably right. Allow them to figure it out, but ultimately get some fresh legs in there. See, you know, how Rapino handles this game. She's been out with the U.S. for a while, and you got to see you get some minutes. Will we see maybe a Sydney Baru? She hasn't. Had an opportunity for the U.S. really since the year they won the World Cup. And she's really just finding her form, coming into form for Kansas City. Lavelle, it's a quick turn, trying to find Press Dunn, pouncing on it. Maybe something here for Crystal Dunn to the end line, the chip there, coming back and put over the bar. Lavelle that time on the right foot. Just too hasty with that go on frame. But the U.S. has looked brighter in this start. They've actually get, gotten around their left side. This one pops out nicely for Lavelle, but she can't get over it. You got to let be more patient. Let that drop for you. What do you like about Lavelle's game, and where can she still grow? You know, I, I've liked her when she's running at that back line, when she solves pressure. But this game, she's looked a, a little too casual. I think she's got to get her body shaped up better when she receives the ball because she has turned the ball over a fair amount today. Get shaped up, use a little more strength. That's something she can build on. Uh, but ultimately, she's very good at solving pressure. And, and I know Jill Ellis says she's a great final passer. I do think she has that quality, but I think it can be better. I think both her and Pew, when they get running at that back line at times, they, they don't change angles enough to open up those passing channels for that final ball. And that little nuance, I think, can break things open for her. Spurred into the middle. That one's blocked. It falls. Andrina Hegerberg couldn't get to it. Her sister can. That's Ada's pass. It's blocked by Short. Intercepted. Bad place to lose the ball. Andrina Hegerberg will turn it around for Hansen. Versus Short, Hansen played it in front. At least three Norwegian players had a chance at that ball, and Hansen is the one that's hurt.
Full name Carolina Graham Hansen. It's Graham on the jersey, but she goes by Hansen. And that was all started with a poor turnover by Casey Short, and that's one of the dangers that we've seen out of Short. It's just that ability to possess out of the back, but she forces this here. You can see she gets Hansen's ankle on that one as that slides far post. That was a wide open net for three Norwegian players had any of the three gotten to the ball. Well, it's a shot cross by Hansen, and you can't blame her for taking that approach. But ultimately, Hansen is someone they can't afford to lose. Yeah, Martin Schongren concern, not because of this game, but because of Euro 2017. You'd like to get out of these two games with a little momentum, some positive play, and no injuries. And that's a key player. He mentioned her to us on our conference call with him earlier in the week. Loves the way she combines with Ada Hagerberg. Considers Hansen to be one of the keys to his team. And I think we've seen that in, in some of her ability just to solve pressure and dictate tempo. U.S. will launch that one in, but it's too close to goal. Yelmsmith gets to it. 53rd minute, zeros on the board. USA versus Norway. With the big one coming up tonight on FS1, USA versus Mexico. From the famous Azteca. That's Lavelle. We'll be sending you back to Azteca when we are done. There's some more thoughts with Rob and the guys. Hansen is okay, apparently. 53rd minute. Norway's out of Hegerberg trying to push it back. Lost it there. That's a better look from the U.S. winning that ball back defensively. A lot of numbers around defensively condensing Norway into one side and winning possession ultimately. Right, took that ball down well. It looked like she may have lost it in the sun initially. Hansen wants to get back in the field with the referee's permission. Quick shot is wide of goal. By my count, Allie, it's six or seven USA shots, and not one of them has hit the target. Well, it that's comes unusual down, for them. It is, but it also comes down to quality opportunities, right? I mean, that's even Press just making something out of nothing, trying to face herself up. Not a clean opportunity for her. They're just not getting in on, on those sitters, as we call them, that they so often create. And I think it comes down to a lot of this tempo by the U.S. Who's dictating play? Who's going to beat that midfield line, take the onus to change it up a bit? Right now, it's very methodical and one-paced. Too predictable? Too predictable, absolutely. I just want to see someone take the onus to beat someone, beat a line. Nielba pushing it into the middle. Driven by Berga. Too close to Nair. The USA was looking to solve their goalkeeper situation this year, and it looked like Nair and Harris were going to battle for that job. Unfortunately for Ashton Harris, bad time to pick up that quad injury. Yeah, and I do think that it was leaning in Nair's favor before that injury, but now Abby Smith has been very good in the lead. She's the one that's here backing up Nair and someone that, you know, Jill Ellis has always said, it's not just a two-person race come 2019 World Cup, and so this gives an opportunity to someone else to step in, and Jane Campbell's with the 23s. Mm. Nair's been good, though. You saw that graphic. Four goals allowed in the 14 games, plus this one, and three of them came in that one disastrous game against France. She paid the price, but the whole team collectively didn't get the job done defensively. Here's out of Hegerberg. Trying to create something on her own, which she's more than capable of doing, but that time, too much pressure against her, and Lavelle comes back. Horan playing it back to Mewis. Long. Allie Long, another one of the versatile players for this team, has played in the back and also in the midfield. O'Hara. Oh, Lavelle is calling for it nicely. Trying to find press. Lavelle picks it up. Lavelle looking. That's the foot she wanted, but it's blocked. With the sixth minute here is Norway. A lot of room now on this near side. Pushed ahead of Hansen versus Short. Hansen out wide. Now the cross. It was way too far away from out of Hegerberg. She wanted no part of Casey Short as she flew down that right flank this time. 
But good last attack by the U.S. Initially, I thought it was a bit too slow. Ali Long on the ball. She took too many touches before she pinged it wide. But then that ball played into Lavelle was quick, and Lavelle was in a nice little pocket inside the box. Again, on that last camera shot, you can see Mallory Pugh in the background. So let's hope that the injury to the ankle was not serious. She is able to sit and watch this game, but she was supposed to start to repeat that storyline for those who joined us late. Was supposed to start injured in the warm-up, replaced in the starting 11 by Megan Klingenberg. I think it's fair to say the U.S. is lacking her dynamic movement. They missed her. Vold on it. Short should have this. She does, but it's last touch by a Norway player out for a goal kick. Pew gives them another player that can get behind the defense that could also do what you said, take players on. But I think Pew on her own is good. Lavelle on her own is good, but I think they make each other better. I think you're exactly right. And they are going to develop some nice chemistry if they can get closer together on the field. And there's just a look at that little last run in. The big one coming up tonight, Mexico versus the USA. Plenty of hype, well-deserved for that game. 7.30 Eastern on FS1, USA-Mexico. Headed up, and that's going to go wide. You know, when you talk USA-Mexico, that's almost all you have to say in this country, <laughs> right? When you're talking about soccer? Yeah, when you're talking about soccer. People get it. People get it. From Dempsey, as we start, two goals away from breaking Landon Donovan's goal-scoring record. We have it all eyes on Pulisic. It's a record that if he stays healthy, I think it will be his at mm. some point. Lavelle's corner. U.S. still without a shot on target, surprisingly, at this stage of the game. Lavelle. Seem to have some quality to it. Stays in the field of play. It was Horan who had that opportunity, and that ball was out over the end line. Or was Dal Kemper that was going forward? And if I'm Jill Ellis, I, I take a look at the NWSL and watch how good Dal Kemper is at serving those set pieces. I think across the league, she has been the best and most consistent player, and I'd have her taking those set pieces. Holy is coming out of the game for a sub for Norway. has made that change and someone has changed the number it's going to be Minda that's out there she was not listed on the subs bench at the start of the game interesting lineup happenings today <laughs> 60th minute the US on the ball and not for long and again, too long by Ali Long. I almost wonder if in the league with the Thorns, she plays so deep that she's not accustomed to being under that pressure the way she used to be. I think she, she needs to start picking up her tempo, getting rid of the ball quicker. Just a different role for her with the Thorns. Short will push it back. Del Kemper. She and Sauerbrunn have anchored things in their center back positions. It'll fall to Press. And there's the first goal on the USA's first shot. Kristen Press with her 42nd international goal in the US leads. Just like that. I mean, it happened against Sweden. It was two passes, and the US was in, found the back of the net. Happens again today. This time it's Becky Sauerbrunn out of the back. Lavelle tries to help that one on. It doesn't need any help. And press in the nice little seam in behind the two center backs. Trying to hit that far post, but still just gets it across against the momentum of Yelmset. On the ground, so difficult to save. I like the way this one skips in and press sitting off the shoulder of the center back. I mean, not a clinical finish, but press can do that. She's been finding her form for Chicago and not skipping a beat here today. Three goals in eight games played in the NWSL for Press. He's one of five players for the USA to score double-digit goals in three straight years. 
And the challenge for Kristen Press, I mean, so many people want to say, why is she not always starting? You know, you see moments like that. And the challenges for her is doing it against the top teams in the world. That's where she t sometimes disappears. So let's see what this goal does for both teams right now. It was Norway's game, fair to say, for almost one hour today. And now that goal changes everything. And, and it, it still leaves a lot of question marks out there for the U.S. is inability to break down an organized defense. That's one direct ball. We know that the U.S. has always been good at that. You don't want to lose that quality, absolutely. Pressure now, the ball in Norway wins it. Here they come, for the attack, spread out wide. Hansen makes a run inside, tackled away for a corner. Minda is trying to get on the end of that. What would have been her first touch since coming in as a sub. And it's the left side again for Norway, finding some space. Great close by Dahlkemper there. Heavy touch a bit, but Dahlkemper right there on the mark. Snuffs out any trouble. Before that ball was played to Minda, Hansen was pointing at the player on the ball to pass it to her. So even though she didn't even have the ball, she was directing the traffic. And she didn't want it running centrally down that channel. She wanted it to go outside to come back in so she could be the one to finish it ultimately. So Norway had four corners in the first half. Not effective on those corners. Neither was Sweden, for that matter, the other day, and they had more in that game against the U.S. Well, all have gone near post, and, and they almost caught Nair sleeping on one, but I think far post could spell trouble. Let's see what Hegelberg does, 14, where her run might be on the service from Hansen. The words from the match referee first, Fern, before this kick is taken. Del Kemper was the player down before. Let's see if that's her or someone else. And she just took a knee. So it was from that last tackle. You could see that she wasn't the same, but I'm not sure what the particular injury was. U.S. soccer officials taking a look at it now. 64th minute. Really the only time in the game where you can get coaching with Julia Ertz play. We just saw her getting some information on the sideline. Well, you would think she'd be the one, the logical one to step in for Dahlkemper. Although she's been playing in the center midfield for Chicago this season. Here's where the injury occurred. But I, she got hit in the face too, I think. So I'm not sure if it was low to the feet or the, haste, or the face. Yeah, because it looked like she's lost her footing. Or the challenge was made. How has she done so far today, would you say? I think she's been excellent. I mean, you think about Norway's attack. It's been stemming from her on the flanks. I mean, they've been very solid centrally and haven't conceded that. USA playing a player down. We'll see about Del Kemper. Off this corner to the middle. Ah, Hegerberg was there. Another close call. The ball looked out, and it was on the end line. And I think that's a better set piece from Norway. You have so many targets, in particular out of Hegeberg, rising up for that one. Just a little bit of a knock, it looks like, by Ali Long to throw the timing off. And they both miss it, in fact, as that one skips on by. And Del Kemper is back on the field. When she's playing as well as she has and just getting this opportunity, you know she doesn't want to come out of the game. Oh, absolutely not. And I think it, it gives Jill Ellis the, the freedom to keep Casey Short on that left side if she can find another center back partner for Becky besides Johnson as an option. USA credited with 10 shots, only one on goal. That was the goal by Kristen Press. Norway with the edge in the corners as well. First time that we've seen that possession stat in the USA's favor this game. On this left side, Hansen, as Norway looks for an equalizer. It's going to be knocked out. You can change the corners now. Add another one to Norway. And we'll see if they send success off of going at least central or far and not to that near post slot.
Hansen's corner. Last one was their most effective, even though it did not result in a goal. Throw in here for Norway. Martin Schogan, their head coach, said that you always go for a result, but that was really secondary in this game. But I would think he'd be pleased with the way they performed today so far. I think so. I think they, they've shown they can compete with this U.S. team. What I found fascinating when we spoke to him was that he said this U.S. team is, if not one, one of the top three teams in the world. And that's the first time I've yeah. heard a coach say that about a U.S. side. They always say the top the team, best, right? Yeah, always. FIFA rankings now say differently. Whatever stock you put in those <laughs> on either the women's or the men's side. Long. Pushing it aside. Right sideline. O'Hara. She's been active all game long. Continues there to run deep. Minda. And it's knocked out. Norway has the ball. And she's got to get a corner kick there, or she's got to spin out quicker. But uh, you're watching the U.S., and not a lot of players are moving to get in a support position to be a, an option at a different angle. This is where I think the U.S. is just falling short. It, it's kind of that impetus to help each other get in good support angles or take on at pace. Since the moment, Kelly O'Hara, I think, drives end line there and earns her, her team a corner kick. You also win it there. Cut back. Press has the game's only goal. We'll push it back towards O'Hara, who plays for Sky Blue in the NWSL, New Jersey-based team. Horan keeping it on the deck towards Lavelle. He's going to go out for a USA corner. And that's better. I mean, you saw how many numbers Norway was flooding to the ball, and they were able to solve it with one penetrating pass into Lavelle into the box. 22-year-old midfielder will take this corner. Near post, it bounces. This can be tricky. Comes all the way out, though. The U.S. trying to recover this. It's short. Dunn versus Torshnos. Dunn got away. Crystal Dunn too early on that ball. Had other options, too. She had time. I mean, continue driving on that end line. Change your angles. I mean, you make that defense shift with every touch. You dribble along that line, end line. And she's one of those players you were talking about before that can break a game down 1v1. Oh, and she just did. I mean, in the first half, it was her and Torshness against each other. And I think Torshness won that battle. This one, it was all done. Lavelle at the end line. Another sweet move. And then lost it, but did she earn a corner? No. It's a goal kick. Andrina Hegerberg was back there defending. That's the confidence, though, that you want to see out of Lavelle. Yes, it's you have the liberty when you're attacking third, but I want to see that out of her in the middle, taking players on and changing a game in those moments. And I believe it looked like she megged her on that one. Martin Shogun's team down by a goal, 70th minute. So much great history from Norway on the women's side. Famous names of the past, Mariana Patterson at the Nordby, Hegerisa. And now players like Ada Hegerberg are trying to make names for themselves as well, and she'll be one of them. She'll be one of the all-time greats if her career continues to grow like it has in these past five years. Hansen to Hegerberg, leaving it off. Bold. Couldn't get through. Long disrupted her, but Norway gets it back with Hansen. Nice. Quickly on the give and go. Hansen. The cross. And skimmed off the top with the crossbar. Looked like Nair had that one covered. First, it looked like that ball was going to go out of play initially. But Hansen on this right side is having a little bit of success in the second half. And I don't know if Nair knows exactly where that one's going to end up. I think she's fortunate it bounces off the top of the crossbar there because she looks like she isn't certain. 71st minute, USA leading Norway, 1 to nothing, and a goal by Kristen Press in the 60th minute. Don't forget the Confederations Cup begins Saturday on Fox Sports. And then the Gold Cup, July 7th on Fox Sports. Mexico again in the USA involved in that competition. Mexico has Confederations Cup and Gold Cup. 
an extremely busy summer for them and for Fox for that matter. But it's a good summer for soccer fans, that's for Excellent. sure. Excellent. Mewis. O'Hara. She let that go for a corner. Mewis was last touched by Torsnes. Seventy second minute. The USA up by a goal. And Martin Shogun will make another change soon. Long Dalkemper, Horan among the targets going forward. Pick your poison. <laughs> Lavelle on that in swinger. Second ball. Third one and press tagged it but mishit it. Goal kick, Norway. And I go back to send, have Dahl Kemper whip those balls in because those last two services from Lavelle have been way too lofted. You've got the targets in the air and Long and Mewis. I say you have Dahl Kemper step over there because she drives that ball in. All it needs is a little deflection. He um Seth in her 112th international appearance got that one forward. Hansen blocked. Norway will get it back with Isaksen spurred out wide. Looking to get numbers forward in the 73rd minute. Their first half is certainly better than the second half so far. Done from long. Press. Trapped by O'Hara. Sauerbrunn. Dal Kemper. The U.S. just keeping the ball, making Norway do the chasing. That's Anna Hegerberg, 14 in the red. I'm really trying to goad them into stepping out of their defensive blockade. Hegerberg hasn't had much service today, so she's not been the factor that she can be so far. And I think you have to credit that blockade of the two sixes and Long and Mewis and the two center backs for that reason. She's really only seen the ball after the ball's gone wide and been played into her centrally. That's one area of the field that Jill Ellis spoke to us about yesterday that she was trying to condense because she knows they like to go down the middle. So it's Mewis and Long and then the two center backs. They've kept that space. Maybe that's why so much of it was open on the flank, too. I think so. But but this U.S. team, historically, this year at least, have been conceding spaces when those outside backs rotate forward. So any coach scouting them knows those pockets are on, and that's where you want to get into. Here's the change. Udland is going to be coming into the game. Let's see who's coming out. Spurred. So that's the second change made by Norway. Lisa Marie Utland plays in Norway. And now another change as well. Eight off, three in. Maria Torres' daughter will replace Andrina Hegerberg. But the most dangerous Hegerberg is still on the field. Done with it. So a double switch from Norway, and the game rolls on. That's up by one. Looking to close it out. This was the scoreline on Thursday against Sweden. Well, Sweden almost got one towards the end of that game. Um, they had plenty of chances as well, like Norway has today. Torsnos in the throw in. And the U.S. will collect it back. Sauerbrunn's pass to O'Hara. Press leads it. Lavelle kept it in play nicely. Lavelle looks up. Try to find Press. Difficult ball. Norway clears into the open spaces. Short gives it a ride the other way. Moran couldn't bring it down cleanly. Hansen can. Out of Hegerberg, straight ahead, has Vold to the right. Hegerberg finds her. It's a little bit off the mark. Vold will collect and play it out. Now, now late whistle, but the foul was given. 
It'll be interesting to see if this is in fact a foul as that ball is floated in. It gives Nair plenty of time to get underneath it. And then Utland just comes in. Looking for the ball, obviously, but knocks Nair as she rises up. 77th minute. Allison Nair will put it back into place. She had another good season with the Chicago Red Stars. Headed ball. U.S. looks to see where it went. Lavelle backtracking wins it. O'Hara drives it. Press. Flag goes up now. Offside U.S. And I think perhaps Press is staying a little bit higher in this half. Being a threat in behind, that's opening things up. But I do, in fact, I think Lavelle does better on that outside spot right now. I think she's more comfortable out there, has more time to face up and, and do her magic. Inside, she was getting lost a bit. And I think Haran is very comfortable in there with tons of players coming at her from different spots. And I think that's one of the reasons for the change in the U.S.'s play this half, and that's just a look at Press sitting on that back line, pulling off the back shoulder, opening up that passing lane. Good awareness by Sauerbrunn to know that that's on and hit the direct ball because the U.S. hasn't played that ball all that often today to soften up Norway. This will lead to a free kick for Norway in a good spot. And a Hagerberg draws it. Seventy-eighth minute, still time for Norway to try to get one. And that's a heavy challenge by Dunn sliding in there. Studs up. This is beyond 30 yards. They've got to be aware of the weak side. Hansen will take it. Floats one up. It's there at the back post area. Two U.S. players went down. Mielda was one of the targets. She's a Chelsea teammate of Crystal Dunn. And a former center mid for this Norway squad. Perfect ball placement as that served in. Landing right at that six yard box. That's a sweet spot. Yelda just unable to get on the end of it. She's not one of the taller players on the field. And there puts it over the halfway line. Lavelle's header, press. Lavelle try to follow it up. Oh. It's a tough game. That's Isaksen who's bleeding. And the training staff's out immediately. So the referee was right there to see it. The elbow of Horan. And that's a foul. You can't jump with your elbows up like that. That one did a lot of damage. E6 in is the player that's down. Plays for the club side. Stavak. That's Martin Shogren. His team only down by a goal. You could make the claim that they were the better team for sure in the first half. Second half maybe more of a wash. And that's going to be the confidence builder for them as they head into the Euros. And another look there of the high elbow of Haran. I've had that happen to me. Head split open. I had a dentist in the stand stitch me up. A dentist? Hey, you take any doctor you can wow. find. 80th minute. USA up by a goal. And E6 in off on the sideline. So right now, Norway, a player down. And you would think they're not going to try to stop the bleeding. One would assume that they will just make a substitution. And, you know, I, we talked about Martin looking at his midfield coming into this match, trying to find answers, going to the Euros, and I think they did well in the first half. I really do. Controlled a lot of the tempo. They broke on the counter, the ones that launched it initially. I'm told that while we were away in replay a while back, maybe four or five minutes ago, Hegeberg was given a yellow card. Probably for descent. Here is Dunn coming back. We saw Guru Whiten being spoken to by the coaching staff, so we assume she'll be coming in for the injury section. 
Dal Kemper. Press out wide this time. That would have been a nice move. Didn't work though. Wasn't completed. Look at that last ball by Dal Kemper is a look at her ability to play make out of that back line. Perfectly weighted pass into the path of press. Hudson. Udla makes the run on the right side. They ignored her, and that's too far from Minda. And it was a nuanced run by Utlin. Initially, she, she pulled herself in towards the other center back, and then so she created more space for herself and then cut into that gap. And that is Wrighton, who's come into the game for Isakson. What does it tell you about the lack of U.S. subs in this game? What does that say about what Jalalis wants to do here? I almost look at it as a reflection of the lack of depth that she feels that she wants to put on the field right now and making these players figure it out, perhaps build partnership chemistry and, and solve some things, give players more experience and time. Lavelle, for instance, asking a lot of her. She covered a lot of ground against Sweden and then again today. It just wants her to have those minutes to play in these tough situations. You know, Rapino, do you bring her into the fold? Now we're going to see a change. Julie Arts, if that name does not sound familiar, it's the former Julie Johnston. Her husband is a professional football player with the Philadelphia Eagles. So Julie Arts will come into the game replacing Kelly O'Hara. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Kelly O'Hara was on the right backside. Ertz, you don't typically think of as being an outside back. She's capable of it. So is Dahl Kemper. So is Sauerbrunn, for that matter. Perhaps they go with three. We'll see. Looks like Julie is on the right side. And Lavelle is pulling up. And that's not good in the end. Not good. First of all, when she didn't go after that ball, she must have felt it like right before that because it seemed like the ball was in reach. And she's just in full stride here, pulls up. Everyone knows that moment when if you've played soccer, you feel in your hand me that big sharp twinge. And we just talked about how many minutes and how much ground she covered against Sweden. You're traveling from the U.S., from Boston, overseas. It's a lot on these players, and, and they're not used to doing the balancing the club and country. Carly Lloyd looked like they were going to give her the night off. It's nighttime in Norway. Six hour time difference from the East Coast, so the substitution is going to be made. Lavelle is walking off, and Boston Breakers coaching staff and fans are hoping that this is minor. Which is someone who has had a bad luck with injuries in college, struggled with it. That was one of the things Jill Ellis talked to her about was getting her nutrition right. And that seems to have paid off. So Carly Lloyd, who scored three goals in her last three games against Norway, can maybe add to that total. Lloyd is also three goals shy of 100 in her career. It's just a matter of time, you know, with Lloyd. So Lavelle's day is done. The U.S. team trying to close it out with a one to nothing victory or more if they could get one. It's just so brutal for Lavelle. I mean, of course, she's going to come back, but it's just she's hitting her stride with the U.S. team, finding her form, leading that Boston team, and then a little hiccup in the road. Yeah, pressure on her right from both club and country actually now. Responsibility in the national team and uh, definitely with the club side. And you can see that she's embraced it and thrived under it. And that's what you need out of these players that step into the U.S. as young internationals. Carly Lloyd, we headed to Houston after this is all over. To play with the Houston Dash. She was playing with Manchester City. And I think they'll welcome her return. New coach there as well, right? Randy Waldron out yeah. in Houston. They were struggling. 
Morgan Bryan's been hurt too for Houston. So rough start to their year in the NWSL. Hoping be that Lloyd can help revive their hopes. That is Lloyd going in hard after that. Just impressed still with the game's only goal. 87th minute. U.S. with a 1-0 lead. On the road in Norway. To this left side, Crystal Dunn over the top, looking for Lloyd, who headed it forward. It's going to be swept away. Lloyd from Mewis. Between Volda and the goalkeeper, Helmsmith. That's covered. Big one tonight. Mexico and the United States, 7.30 Eastern on FS1. When this game is over, we'll get some more thoughts from our gang down in Mexico. Rob Stone anchoring our coverage. U.S. in the second tour of duty under Bruce Arena has looked much better in these past few games, including the friendlies of 2017. Big win over Honduras in San Jose, 6-0. Got them off to the good start. Under Bruce. Huge win for them there. But how about Nagby? We talk about Pulisic. Nagby's been changing the game for the U.S. Bold puts it up. Nair reacts to it. Keeps everybody calm back there. And it looks like with Lloyd on for Lavelle, Press has now gone into that right midfield spot. I know these are fluid. These positions are fluid. They're capable of interchanging. And that's the beauty with this front six. Bounce all the way back to Hyomseth. 88th minute time running out on Norway's hopes for an equalizer. They're looking on the long ball. It's one of their trademarks from years past. Hansen. And that's going to go out of play. This is the team, though, Ali, that you think could make some noise in Euro 2017, Norway. I do. I absolutely do. I mean, right now, 1 0 against the U.S. and first half they could have found the back of the net a few different times I think the second half they've petered out a bit perhaps the fitness will be an element that will grow for them as they head into Euros but when you have someone like Otta Hegeberg and Hansen who can set her up you know you've got a dynamic duo that that is capable of a lot and there's Hegeberg there I mean you just need her closer to goal they haven't been able to get her in and around the box as much as you'd like in the second half at least bold Hegeberg's calling for it and line she'll get there you try to play it across that didn't work they'll be re relying on her to have a big tournament when that starts this summer in the Netherlands and yeah she should carry a lot of the load but you're seeing out of this Norway team that they're capable of attacking through a different variety of ways, not just centrally. They were getting wide around the U.S. in the first half, and so it's not going to be about just stopping Hegeberg the way I think, you know, this U.S. team might have thought coming in. Thrown here for Bold. Pushed across by Torstoder. Bergen on the left side with that pass. Broken up by Press. Took it away from Koshnos. Out again. 90th minute, USA leading on a goal by Kristen Press on the team's first shot on target. And perhaps still their only shot on target. Didn't see. The official stats lately, but at one point, 10 shots, only one on target, one goal. And really, that was their only quality chance, and that's oftentimes what, you know, shots on goal spell for you. You also take their time putting this back into play. Is that right? Five minutes of stoppage time. This crowd wants more. Yeah. <laughs> A little generous with the time. I know there were subs made and the Essex an injury, but she wasn't on the field all that long. But that's the case. So five more minutes gives Norway certainly more hope. And this is where, for game management purposes, as they head into the Euros, they're down a goal. They've got to start playing a little more direct. If you're in the Euros right now, you need to get a point out of this at least. 
Hagerberg sends it out wide. That's bold. Took it around short. Henson comes in. There's some good coverage there in the end from Dal Kemper. Miller will put it inside the box. That's headed away. Pirates. Torstolder. Miller settling. Yelda. Double team. Lloyd takes it away. Dunn on that left side. It's knocked out of play. It's a throw in for the U.S. In the second minute of stoppage time, minimum of five put on the board. The U.S. not committing numbers forward. Looking to see this one out. A reminder, more coverage from Azteca when we are done here. The USA trying to close out. A win over Norway. Hansen. Owens blocked. The US has to clear it out. Not a good clearance there. Second ball. Headed not out again. Bold leaves it. Quick strike. And it's a weak one. Oakland didn't get all of that. The US was fortunate she didn't. And I'm just not used to seeing the U.S. stand like that. I mean, no players firing at that ball as it was a poor clearance. It's dropping in around your 18. You need to be flying at that ball to get something on it, deflection, cleared away, anything to get it out of there. It seemed more like a friendly mentality. Torshness and then the foul was given against the U.S. But I think it's a mentality that, you know, the U.S. never has even in friendlies, typically. Or historically, I should say. Pushed out wide by Hegelberg. Vol draws two. Nice calm ball in. Hansen blocked. Should get another go at it. And that's blocked as well, trying to return it to Vold. Short putting pressure on the ball against Hansen. We don't want to give Hansen time on the ball. She'll have a throw in. Karina Hansen drives it across, swept out. Not far enough. Short will let it go out. The U.S. was fortunate there. Some of these clearances, they've been bailed out. And I, I don't think Norway's done themselves ser a good service in this final third. They could have swung some of those balls back in, in the mixer, but they're letting the U.S. off the hook. And this is game management for the U.S. I mean, the game's winding down. Put it anywhere. Put it in the stands. Just get it out of there. Well, the halfway line from there off the head of Lloyd. Press trying to head it forward. Have about a minute left in this one. With Amy Fern holds true to five minutes of stoppage. You see that little seam that Hagerberg popped into to get that ball out of the air. That's where the U.S. can be vulnerable. Launched long. Ted for Hagerberg. Now it'll go wide. Bold end line. The cross blocked. No, we still have some hope and life. But about a half a minute is left on that. Mielda kept it on the deck for Vold. The run by Hansen. Not enough on that tuck in pass, and Del Camper got it to short. Lloyd eats up some more seconds with Dunn on the pass, and then shanked out. U.S. could have killed the game right there. It still might be enough. Seconds left. Almost more time has been added. Blocked away towards the circle. That's going to do it. Same result this Thursday night. A 1 0 win this time. Kristen Press gets the game's only goal. And not a lot on the line for the U.S., but I think overall a pretty lackluster.